take me a while to get to the point of sustainability, but I hope you bear with me. So, um, like a lot of thought leaders, uh, Elon Musk uh, among them, uh, they situate the necessity for human space exploration in really starkly uh, existential terms. Either we become a spacefaring species, or we become an extinct species. And, and this isn't just about climate change, but rather an array of existential risks, some natural, some anthropogenic, that many riskologists say uh, place the likelihood of our annihilation uh, in the coming century somewhere between 9 and 50%. Uh, the 21st century is really unique in the sense that at no other time in human history have we faced such an array of forces that could wipe us out entirely. Way to warm up the audience, Lance. Um, uh, so it was perhaps with these thoughts in mind that um, ASU's president, uh, Michael Crow, created the Interplanetary Initiative in 2016. This is a, a pan-university effort to design and build the future of humans in space. Uh, the following year, uh, the initiative launched a series of pilot projects to work toward this goal, uh, and I'm the lead of one of those projects, uh, Port of Mars. Um, now, we begin with this observation. Uh, some of the toughest challenges in human space exploration aren't technological, they're social. They're not about navigating the space between Earth and, and Mars or the Moon or an asteroid, but they're about navigating the much more difficult space between you and me, or between I and we. Now, Port of Mars began as a research effort to in investigate the question, um, how can, oops, there it is. Um, nope, need to go back. How do I go back? Oh, Bottom button? button? There we go. Um, oh, sorry. There we go. So, Port of Mars uh, began as a research e uh, effort to investigate the question, how can we best sustain human communities in space? Uh, now, this is not a technological question, it's a social one. Once we solve all the technological problems of getting humans to space and providing them with sufficient food and water and oxygen and radiation shielding and energy and other resources, how do we ensure that those communities don't devolve into Lord of the Flies or 1984 or some other young adult novel? Um, before we spend the billions of dollars uh, and place lives at risk sending people to space, we need to make sure we equip those explorers with the tools necessary to create healthy communities. So, Port of Mars is a game-based social science experiment designed to find solutions. Um, it's, a, it's a board game, a card game, uh, where players are citizens of Mars charged with working together to provide for the same, sustained welfare of the, of the community. Uh, the game is simultaneously competitive and cooperative. Uh, players have to navigate a balance between their personal ambitions and the good of the community. Uh, the player with the most points at the end wins, uh, but if the community collapses, everybody dies, and as we all know, if everybody dies, nobody wins. <laughs> so um, our team uh, tracks and records all of the player behavior and communication, and then we analyze this data to examine what behaviors uh, and group dynamics tended to produce success and what tended to produce failure. So each instance of gameplay is a simulation, a modeling exercise for the future of human communities in space. So, specifically, we're investigating uh, <clears throat> what are called commons dilemmas. Now, uh, it's, it's a term uh, that you've, you've heard today and yesterday, but I'm just gonna uh, describe it really quickly. Commons ref uh, denotes any shared resource that belongs to ev everyone within a given social environment. So these include global commons like the oceans, the atmosphere, Antarctica, regional commons like fisheries, forest, and energy infrastructure, uh, local commons like road systems, parks, libraries, and hyperlocal commons like our time here, uh, a shared bathroom, or a box of donuts in the office break room. 
Uh, now, many of you are probably familiar with the concept of the tragedy of the commons. Um, I, I think uh, Ian uh, mentioned it in his talk uh, the other day. The idea is that individuals will always seek to maximize their net benefit from shared resources. If I'm a fisherman and I make um, $2 for each fish I catch, I will always seek to maximize my haul. Uh, though doing so may reduce the total number of fish available, the effects of overfishing are shared by everyone, while the benefits of the fish that I catch are mine alone. Now, since each fisher is a rational actor, they will all make the same calculations and thus seek to maximize the number of fish they catch. In this manner, the fisheries will eventually be depleted, and therein lies the tragedy. According to this theory, we are irretrievably locked into a system that compels fishers to fish without limits in a world that is limited. So, uh, this is the guy. Um, uh, uh, Garrett Hardin, uh, who said, Ruin is the destination toward which all men rush, each pursuing his own best interest in a society that believes in freedom of the commons. Freedom in a commons brings ruin to us all. So these are the words of Garrett Hardin, whose uh, famous 1968 article, The Tragedy of the Commons, uh, uh, gave us this idea. And it's really difficult to overstate the influence of this work educators in diverse fields, economics, political science, uh, ecology, and others still teach Hardin in their classes, and his article is really widely anthologized. Um, it's a narrative that governs a great deal of thought in modern environmentalism, public policies, and corporate strategies. Now, it's worth noting that Hardin was a racist xenophobe, white nationalist, and neo-Malthusian eugenicist, which I suppose makes him fitting for our times. Um, but, but he was also wrong. Uh, his theories were definitively refuted by Eleanor Ostrom, the first woman to receive the Nobel Prize in economics. She revolutionized the field of commons research her findings show that humans regularly govern common resources sustainably without relying on the only two solutions Hardin uh, 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 put forward, privatization or government control. So Ostrom founded the Center for Behavior Institutions and the Environment at ASU, uh, and that's now under the direction of Marco Jansen and Marty Andres, who are now two of the top world scholars in common research. Um, and Jansen and Andres are, in fact, the lead social scientists on the Port of Mars project. They designed the experiment at the heart of our game. So our efforts are uh, broadly interdisciplinary. Our team includes experts from social science, sustainability, planetary science, space exploration, learning science, law, as well as uh, folks from industry uh, in game design from Riot Games and independent graphic designers and visual artists who work a lot with the folks who make Dungeons and Dragons and Magic the Gathering. Um, we ran experiments uh, February through April of this year with, uh, with students at ASU. We're now in the process of analyzing that data. So uh, some of you might wonder, uh, feel like it's odd to use a game to conduct science. Uh, but games are pretty widely used uh, uh, as a research tool in fields like economics and social science uh, more broadly. What distinguishes our game from uh, and, and it's used a lot in commons research, too. What distinguishes uh, Port of Mars from other commons research games is its uh, somewhat higher degree of complexity and uh, a secondary goal we had, we wanted to make it fun. Uh, most game-based social science experiments are not fun. They are designed to test certain hypotheses or gather data about how people behave in a controlled situation. But to our delight, each group in our experiments remarked on how fun the game was and inquired when, they might, when it might be available for purchase. So, Port of Mars is a, uh, is a platform 
to investigate how people navigate dilemmas of shared research, uh, resources, common good, and collective action in the context of high risk and high uncertainty. Now these are the conditions that future human space communities will face as they try to survive on an alien world. Uh, this is a new area of commons research and space exploration research. But the knowledge we're producing is fungible. That is, like so much research in space exploration, the, finding, the findings of Port of Mars are applicable to other domains, and among the most pressing of these is anthropogenic climate change. If you look again at this research question, I think you'll see why it's applicable. Port of Mars is set in a fictional Martian community, but the findings may help us manage our most urgent terrestrial challenges. Uh, we can't stop climate change because we're already in it. We're soaking in it, as the old commercial used to say. What we can do, what we have to do, is navigate the consequences, work to mitigate its impact, and slow and hopefully ultimately reverse its project. The problem isn't how to solve global climate change. In a sense, we know what needs to be done. Much like I said with space exploration, the problem is social and political. The problem is exercising the will, the collective will necessary to do what has to be done. So uh, how do we navigate? Uh, so these are dilemmas of shared resources, common good and collective action. How do we navigate and sustain a balance between the self-interests of individuals and groups on the one hand, nations, communities, corporations, and the common global good on the other? So Port of Mars is an effort to discover answers to these questions and identify what factors and behaviors tend to produce desirable outcomes. So um, the, the late, let's say, the late Brazilian, uh, 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 whoops, went too far. Nope. I'm missing, I'm missing a slide. Oh, that's, my fault. Oh. that's okay. That's okay. So the late Brazilian theater artist Augusto Boal uh, developed a set of theatrical forms called the Theater of the Oppressed. It's a it's a platform for uh, enacting change, a, a laboratory for experiments in modes of resistance to oppression, as Boal states. The theater itself is not revolutionary. It's a rehearsal for the revolution. So our efforts really draw inspiration for, from Boal's model. Port of Mars isn't the change we seek. It's a laboratory for discovering how we can best get there. It's a theater for rehearsing the future that we desire. And perhaps it's a vector to help foment the global change necessary to save us. Thank you. Is it Michael Caine who gets to utter the line in Interstellar that we're not meant to save the planet, we're supposed to leave it? <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, yeah, probably. Uh, probably. Um, so, uh, you know, the comments is, you know, that that boogeyman and all of this is uh, how do we manage all of that and obviously taking it to another planet is a way to explore that. Any questions for plants? When will the game be available? <laughs> uh, so we're, we're in the process right now, uh, uh, we're, we're about to start a process actually of, of transitioning it to a digital platform uh, where we can uh, uh, collect where we can scale up our sample size and collect data much more efficiently and accurately. Uh, but we will probably have a, a, a physical board game on the market uh, or, or available for, for purchase uh, within the next year. Yeah, yeah. Um, how does your game deal with things like emergence and innovation? Like how much, how were you able to do it so the structure doesn't um, determine too much? So, um, uh, the, the game needed to be uh, of, a, of a certain degree of, of, of simplicity uh, uh, because otherwise it's, it's just hard to figure out what, what it is you're testing. Um, uh, but, but one of the things that, that is kind of different about the game from other uh, commons, uh, game-based research in the, in the commons is the introduction
reduction of a degree of uncertainty, uh, there's uh, uh, we use something called event cards. So every round, players uh, uh, draw a card, and, and the, the card is some unexpected thing that happens that can affect things positively or negatively. So some of these might be uh, uh, new inventions, for example, or, or, or good things that happen. Others might be like dust storms and, uh, that negatively impact the community. Um, Lance, is there a way to translate this game into a performative art or a theater piece or some sort of reality TV show? Uh, <laughs> there, there is always a way. If there's, uh, if, you know, if there's time and money, there's a way. Um, uh, I, I already think of it as performance. I talk about performance as a conjunction of doing and witnessing, and, and this is all about people playing the game and other people watching writing it down, uh, recording it. So it is a kind of performance, but not the theatrical kind that we're familiar with. Uh, uh, the, the game designer, uh, the, our, our lead game designer, who works for Riot Games, the makers of League of Legends, um, is also a, a former theater student of mine, and uh, 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 is a playwright. So I'm sure he would be super interested in, in turning Port of Mars into a play. The, the title actually comes from the opening monologue of Henry V. Oh, okay. uh, then would warlike Harry assume the port of Mars? I'm, I'm fascinated by this project only because it takes it out of context and I always think there's something to be learned by taking the crisis or the challenge into a whole other realm where you can see it under different terms, and different light, and different language. And I, I hope that there are lessons to be learned from this that we can actually apply to climate change. Yeah, uh, I mean, we're all already getting some, some early uh, uh, results uh, from the data analysis, but uh, that's going to take a little time because there's a lot of stuff we collected. Well, maybe next year. Yeah. How, um, how will we find out about those results? Uh, we'll be publishing, uh, and uh, I'm working on, uh, so the Interplanetary Initiative has a website, and Port of Mars has a page there. Okay. Uh, I will probably be launching a, pay, uh, a separate page just for Port of Mars, so I'll be reporting it on the on the websites, and and there'll be uh, uh, in the next year once we've finished uh, uh, analyzing the data, hopefully in a in a few months, we'll write it up and, and publish it in a in a couple of uh, venues.